So, welcome to the Dallas After Effects user group. Uh, this is the March 22nd version of our meeting. Nice. And we're going to look at a little bit of Cinema 4D Lite integration with After Effects and kind of going back and forth. Um, <clears throat> I've been fascinated with the ability to create and on online 2D maps and then turn them into 3D, sorry, mazes in After Effects. And then some of the time uh, that I'm doing this, I'm working with lens flares, like you can see the lens flare up on the maze up there. And I want to be able to track that lens flare in 3D space, but because After Effects proper does not have a 3D lens flare, we have to do something to make it um, actually translate from 3D space into a 2D point. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, you can see here that in order to get in touch with us, you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash Dallas AEUG. Go ahead and connect with the group, learn all you can, and share all you can. Uh, so now we're going to head over to After Effects. <clears throat> Already got a scene kind of started here. This footage is courtesy of Jason Pierce, Triunion Films, one of our members. And see my maze kind of tracked in there on the island. And so what we're going to do is recreate that. Cool. We're going to start with um, start with a maze. And I'm going to go over here and figure out where the maze is. So I'm going to drop or my other window. There we go. <clears throat> and this is uh, just a link that I already put up on the AUG site. Creativemaze.com. Yeah. D. And so. D? <laughs> Germany. Yeah, is it? Oh, uh, yeah, Germany? Deutschland. Yeah. yeah. And so you got all these little selections here, different looking mazes. Just really fun, interesting things. That one kind of looks kind of goofy and hand drawn. Here's another one, kind of for that. Oh, cool. It's like a, so all these wonderful uh, types of mazes, even a circular maze like in Inception. Is there somebody out there? Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> we have the ability to add the uh, solution in there and I know what fuzzy lines is oh that's very interesting organic kind of cool that looks like a uh, old Atari game kind of thing hey hi Jeremy hey it's me back for another meeting of the day all right <laughs> and of course you have some various settings here for cell size and line width and um, rows and columns. I just, I, I knew I was going to need a rectangle. So I kind of did my settings like this. And you just say create and download. And it downloads a PDF that looks like that right there. Nice. And then I open this up in Illustrator. Just drag it on there. It's very simple, uh, but if I were to open this in After Effects, let's just make sure over here that I'm doing the right stuff. All right. So uh, over here in Illustrator, if I were to just drag this uh, project into After Effects, it would give me this one layer with the white back there with the um, 
the black lines, the arrows, and the solution line all on one layer. I don't want that. I want to be able to break them into separate layers. So what I can do is select here. <clears throat> Whatever is selected, if I drag this little dot to another layer, then it'll put it on that layer. So for my arrows, I'm just going to select both of those, shift select, put them there, call that arrows, I'm going to call this solution, and then this is going to be my maze, and this is the background. So I have Solution, maze, arrows, and background. All right, and I'll save that as uh, Illustrator, and I'll just call this two, like that. And we can hide Illustrator. I'll just go back to After Effects, and when I import this. I'm just going to do uh, so. I can I can go import file. I can also do Command I or Control I on Windows. Uh, I can also just go grab this guy and just drag him into my project pane, and he'll import. But just since we're here, I'll do solution two, and it's going to ask me if I want to do a composition or footage. I want composition because it'll bring in the layers all separated out as illustrator layers. And I'll do layer size instead of document size. And the reason I do that is if I have layers that are smaller than the maze, um, like if I had an icon or a logo or something like that, it wouldn't come in with the full boundaries of the comp. It would come in with its own really tight uh, bounding box. So I hit there. Put that in my pre comps, and if we <clears throat> double click there, we look over and see. <laughs> There's our maze, bless you. So we have solution, maze, arrows, and now I can, through the magic of After Effects, create shapes from vector layer. And now I have the ability to change my line width like that. Uh, I can even jump in here and see my contents. So if I have, let's say that path right there, I just wanted that to be a room up there. Destroy my maze in various ways. Like that. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. If you do that um, shape layer from vector thing with like a logo, does it get it like perfect or is it? It should be perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. There's mm -hmm. some settings you can adjust on that, right? As far as what it's estimating. I'm not sure. Or is it like it something? Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Good thing to look into. Uh, so you can also, uh, because it is a shape layer with paths, see how my uh, end caps were kind of chunky. Mm -hmm. I can go in here, scroll down. I wonder if I could just make a group out of all of that. I uh, may need to merge paths. So, let's see. Let's go way back up here. I'm holding the space bar to get the hand to come up. And I'm going to group those. Oh. I needed to create the group and then select them all. That I come here and drop them in the group. 
that. Okay, now I just need to change what my group lives. I'm going to do another group, <clears throat> but not inside there. Go back up here. Call this one maze group. Create another group. main and now I can easily get to my transform and offset my anchor point like that now I'm back in the center and can easily get down here to the stroke this is what I want to show you so I can do butt caps projecting caps how they how they join so changing up the loop letter join projecting so that's what a a maze typical maze that I would think I'm gonna use is gonna look like like that I'll hit U to twirl all those up we have the solution there. The solution's pretty interesting because it's kind of curvy like that. And I can go composition, sorry, layer, uh, create shapes from vector. Let's see how many shapes it created. Oh yeah, just one path. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Because what I can do is parent something to that path if I want. Like a camera or a light, nice. or an arrow or a guy, a little guy, right? a little guy. So now that I have that, <laughs> let's make that blue, and I'm gonna take this here, extend that out. So, and do the same with this one. Like that. All right, so now we have a maze and we have a solution. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Got my arrows in there, but I'm not gonna use those. So now what I can do is even, I'm gonna check and make sure what my 3D renderer is. It's currently Cinema 4D. Uh, Cinema 4D Lite. This is After Effects, not the latest version of After Effects, but this is uh, Adobe CC 2017. And I can put in a camera, layer, new camera. So you had to change your, was that your render settings? Correct. So under composition, I'll go to comp settings here, command K. And then under render, normally you would want to use classic 3D. Okay. You never want to use ray trace 3D because Ray Trace 3D takes forever and doesn't give you any, like, I won't say it doesn't give you any benefits, but the time constraints far diminish the benefits that you might get from the Ray Trace 3D. Okay. Cinema 4D, thankfully, uh, does a lot of cool stuff. Extruding bevel text shapes, reflections, curved footage layers, Meaning, if you just have a flat layer, you can kind of curve it a little bit, like uh, bending a poster board. Um, and then environment layers, which are pretty cool. But a ton of stuff is disabled. So you have to be careful if you want to use this a lot, you need to get in there and read, kind of uh, see what the expectations are. Oh, wow. 
Uh, but now that I have my camera and I have my maze, I can start uh, working in 3D space. I'll do C to pull up my camera tool. And I got to go in 3D with my layers. I can turn them like that. Or uh, something that I like to do is put a null in here. Let's just make a camera again. Make the camera. And then layer new null. Make that 3D and parent the camera to the null. And when I rotate the null, my camera is um, set up in such a way that I get <coughs> better, at least better control on that. That that one trick, somebody in this class, it may have been you trying to yeah. maybe somebody else but somebody else showed me that trick and that has saved me so much time <laughs> good. And effort. Yeah. good can you add depth to the maze to make it three-dimensional parent your camera to the solution path and send yourself flying through it yes awesome all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna say maze geometry options extrusion depth 40. And then we're going to go content, no, sorry, uh, material options. Let's don't do that yet. Let's <coughs> add, a, add a light like that. Did geometry options pop up when you change it to cinema? When I change it to cinema and make it 3D. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so then let's back our camera out a little bit so we can see the light here. I'm going to light the rest of the maze up. Like that. All right, now this is where I come back to shadows. So I want to, I can turn off reflections and that will <coughs> reduce rendering time, I think. Uh, I'll do accept lights. Uh, uh, that. And then I'll, we'll hide our bounding boxes. Kind of, so we see depth in the maze, and let's reduce the brightness of that so you guys can maybe see it a little better. And then we have, so if you get a look here at the blue path, I can drop, uh, let's raise the maze, let's don't drop the path, let's raise the maze. Bring it to us in the Z. All right. So now we're seeing the 3Dness of what's going on here. <coughs> okay. And let's back out. And I can add a floor. Maybe I'll need a floor yet. Um, let's make another camera. Here, new camera. Path camera. And now I look here at my solution and I'll show you kind of what I'm doing so you don't get lost. So my solution has a path. The contents, Ooh, path, boom, all right. So if I turn back my, on my bounding boxes, my control points, you can see 
have a path. So I can click that path and copy it, Command C or Edit, Copy. And let's just create another layer here. I'm going to do you, you, and we'll drop the size of this guy down. So now I have a guy, and if I paste in position my guy, I can adjust this thing here and sync. Up with my path. Like, oh, I'm going to do that. Don't want to adjust them all at the same time. Uh, I do want to select them all so I can grab and drag, but if I change one, um, like uh, with the text box, then it'll change all of them across the board. And you'll see that the time is from zero to two seconds. That's unacceptable. Because that would be so fast. So we'll make it 20 this seconds. This is the flash we're talking about. Right. This is me. I'm definitely not a fan. So I'll grab the end and drag it out. Maybe let's do 12 seconds. And you can see. Here he goes. I want to get shut down on YouTube for doing the Mario theme. Uh, that wasn't the Mario theme. All right, so here we go. Orient along path like that. Now, if I run this guy, he sticks to the path. And I can turn off my solution like that. Go back to my other camera. Put my guy in 3D space. Man, I wonder if I botched the whole thing, putting him in 3D space before, or changing his position before putting him in 3D space. So we'll go back. And copy the path again. Path copy. Now that we're in 3D space, paste the position. <clears throat> All right, where are we? Outside the maze. We're definitely outside the maze. <coughs> Wrong way. There we go. We're getting there. Like that. everything again okay so now my guy is facing the wrong direction and I think all I need to do is <clears throat> right there Is going off, going through the maze. Of course, he's putting himself through the wall and all that kind of stuff. But proof of concept, I think that's pretty cool. Can we do that thing? Can we do that thing I was talking about, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. I just wanted you to see what was going on. Okay. Now that we have that, 
we can copy the position to the path camera. I'm going to make sure that it is not point of interest. Paste it there. <clears throat> Turn this camera on. Now we have to figure out what's going on because it looks like he is set to orient. And because he's set to orient, he's going to change based on some interesting things, based on the angle with which he is uh, going along the path. So at this point, maybe we need to adjust him on the Z axis. So I would do this keyframe there and go here. Minus 90. Maybe uh, adjusting the camera zoom like that. Nice. Is that, uh, is that more what you were looking for, Jeremy? That is so cool. <laughs> And honestly, I mean, yeah, it took me a minute to figure some stuff out before you guys got here. But I feel like I'm in Tron. Yeah. <laughs> but the idea of being able to just kind of work this stuff out with a free maze creator online, Illustrator to After Effects. And I did not even use any expressions yet, guys. Yeah. Um, that so. is <laughs> I know you all expected that already. Uh, can you do an expression to make the camera always stay level? Even if that guy turns? Yes. Not to send you down a rabbit trail. I don't. So is it more interesting to you guys to see me track a shot and work out some stuff in Cinema 4D? Or point the... Thing along the path. I think tracking the shot, but okay. wouldn't it be yeah. possible to set a, a focus point in a, at a null object that's writing the path a, you know, a frame or two ahead, and that would just always be the orient too. For the For camera, the I th yes, I think so. So maybe we could do like. that and open up orient toward point of interest do that right there okay good idea pretty slick that's not rotating every time let's see I wonder what there's some of this flipping the situation. Uh, maybe camera position needs to happen later. Yeah, I'm not sure why it is doing that with the camera. I like the the way it's kind of looking around the corners before it goes. Yes. <laughs> but I'm not sure why it's flipping like that. So the keyframes from earlier? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, there, the other way to do that is to have a camera, a path, see the camera path previous and the camera path uh, coming. 
So what it's, what it's going to and where it's coming from and change the angle of the camera based on those two points. But do that um, with the maybe um, I think it would be on the this X rotation here and the expression is uh, uh, um, I think it's that right okay. there. But that may need to go into orientation. So I'm not prepared to work that out for you right now. I would need to do a little trial and error. I'm willing to bet that the camera is doing the flipping because it's you know right on the level. Yeah. And as it gets a little bit up or down, it decides to go on ahead and mm -hmm. do a, a flip to try to continue that mm -hmm. orientation. Oh, okay. Try. It's just a 360 degree thing and it goes on ahead and does that. Right. Let's try and drop the level of the. Try to do amazing backwards. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you got to know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we are going to, instead of having Guy here with the half camera, we're going to let Guy have a... Be a representation. Oh, uh, maybe I was moving it the wrong way. At any rate, here we go. We're going to put him back in the scene here, like so. Make sure he goes through the maze. Yeah, okay. But instead of being able well, maybe we can still see him, but he's going to be a little square like that. And I'm going to add a solid on top of everything. Make it a comp size. And the solid is going to be my flare. And I'm going to go generate lens flare. Like so. And reduce the brightness, like so. And I'm going to do switches and modes and turn this into a screen for right now. And this is where my big expression comes in. Uh, you will see me do this frequently because I like this expression a lot. What I'm going to do is twirl down the position for guy and the position for uh, not the position for flare, flare center. So I'll option and click flare center like that. And I'm going to go L equals, and L is my variable, and I'm going to parent that, or not a parent pick whip, to the guy layer like that. I don't need position. Uh, but uh, so now I've got L equals. That comp, or sorry, that layer, I'll do L dot two comp, like that. There's my expression. And what it does is it uses this uh, two comp uh, function to look at where this position is inside the composition and give me back a 2D coordinate. Okay. okay? Yeah. So I need to find where the anchor point is. Anchor point, like that. This is L dot anchor point. Uh huh. L dot anchor point. So I'm going to do L two comp, 
L dot two comp, and then L dot anchor point inside there. And let's see if I can zoom in. Awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. So L, and you pick with the layer that you want to reference, the 3D layer you want to reference. Two comp, and then you pull the anchor point. <clears throat> now, if the uh, layer does not have an anchor point, because a camera does not have an anchor point, I believe it's possible to just put in the 0, 0, 0, because that is the... Uh, the center of whatever it is, but oh, why, 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 L, is that it? Yeah, so I wouldn't put the L in, I would just do zero, 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 if it's like a camera or something else that doesn't have a, an anchor point. Okay. If it does have an anchor point, just do L dot anchor point like that. So now, if I, I can kind of back my camera out. Like that. We run through, <clears throat> you can see that the flare follows. Nice. The path of Guy. Very cool. Okay. Like that. And I can then go over here and turn on my solution again. Let's see that follows right along on the solution. So the guy is a little bit off there just because of moving him around. Let's put him in a little bit. Cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Very convenient. Um, we can even. I mean, there there are a lot of things we can do. A lot of things we can do. Uh, I can put a put a light actually in the maze. down here for the intensity, reduce those down. <clears throat> that light has a crazy fall off on it, so our crazy radius. Uh, wait, is the light traveling the the light is traveling the path because the light I, I used an expression to pick whip the light to the position of guy. How is it lighting up all the other walls? Well, exactly. it's it is uh, After Effects 3D rendering. Interesting. Uh, so it's not casting shadows. Right.
Could you make it cast shadows? Um, not exactly. Let's do fall off distance. Like that. So now it's kind of localized. Cool. That's awesome. And just another fun thing, this is, uh, you need to really adjust uh, and tweak what's going on. I would I would create another path and make it a loose representation of this path, but I can set up an anchor point or a, a point of interest, sorry, I already have a point of interest right here and pick what's my point of interest to the position of my little character. Have it follow him along. You're saying you'd make a smoothed out version of that pass yeah. on the camera. Yeah, and you, you can see why yeah. that would kind of be necessary. That's cool. Is it possible <laughs> to take the cool. point of interest um, animation as it's linked up right now and generate keyframes from it? Yes. This right here, that point of interest animate, uh, uh, expression. Well, so the, whatever's driving the motion of the camera. Yeah, so that right there, I can go animation, keyframe assistant, convert to keyframes, like that. So now I have keyframes for my point of interest. The problem is, and let me see if I can even do this. Yeah, I was looking for motion paths. Apparently my point of interest does not have a motion path, I can see. Now I could <coughs> create keyframes for this dude. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's see. Is um, that convert expression to keyframes thing available in CS 5.5? It should be. Okay, thanks. Uh, so the light here, I can do like that. And now I have a motion path. Then I could go in and adjust that. The, the thing that I did for, let's see, I have another of these things created. here and it's going to render out the uh, maze real quick. I think it caches it. If your hands are cold, you can come over here and put them on top of the computer. <laughs> that is a sterile thing. This is all in After Effects. Um, How'd you get it to look like that? <laughs> a lot of tweaking. A lot of tweaking. All right, so what I really want to do is, let me see if I can adjust down a little bit. So I would like to render it out for you, or at least for a little bit. Um, yeah, so I did a lot of pre-comping in order to get, oh, I think I know what problem might be, and that is the force motion blur. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I have the, the path, I have the maze, I have the lens flare, all the same things that we did. And then I kind of animated the camera uh, with a few keyframes to get it close to the maze and then away and then up, up high. And then uh, instead of using that path for the path of the, uh, the, the point of interest for the camera, I took out a bunch of keyframes and just kind of averaged out the path. Um, I tried to do it with expressions, but the spreading out of my two points, looking forward and looking back, um, didn't work exactly like I wanted it to. So I just went ahead and manually reduced the number of keyframes so it doesn't jerk around quite so much. That's cool. They really get kind of like bomb wick. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you end up splitting the XY uh, keyframe sets when you did the ed editing on motion? No, I. I rarely split my uh, position axes out. Um, I did not do that for this, just because I would have had two sets of keyframes to adjust instead of the one. Fair enough. But, I was just curious. Yeah. Good question. So uh, let's see. Anything else? I just added a solid underneath here. And then in order to get the maze to look um, like it had a little depth to it, I did a little extra comp here, <laughs> the maze, just regular flat 2D maze. And did a Gaussian blur little solid composite and curves huh. to get a little bit of ambient occlusion. Nice. I thought that was a render thing. That's cool. Just put that on top <laughs> of the uh, solid here, like that. And Bob's your uncle. And all of the all the lights and everything are inside this comp. And then I Go up. So I'm hitting tab to pull up this work, this uh, flow chart here. If you're not using that, I highly recommend it because it helps you keep track of where you are. And then, so there's the maze. I put force motion blur on it because otherwise I won't get motion blur. And then there's uh, the red and then the flare on top. So the regular. Motion blur with the sequence turns off. Yeah. All right, so let's jump over here and I have a shot from Jason that he did for uh, some realty stuff. And it's a much longer shot, I just cropped it for time, so I don't want to try to track all of it, I don't need all of it. Um, hit tab again. And in uh, earlier versions of After Effects, Jeremy, I think it is shift or shift two times, double shift, to pull up your workflow like that. Okay. And then we have here the island for track. And if I click here, you can see that I have a bunch of track points. And might as well just do this for you. Since you're here, since you made the effort to come here. Uh, so what I'll do is just grab some of these points like this. Control click or right click and do create null and camera. It's already solved. So I get my camera in there and my null. 
Here's my null, and you can see how well it's tracked in there. Like that. Just scoot it over so I can put it up here on the corner. Make sure it's pretty close to the corner. And then I have a maze that is Where's the one I don't want to use. Why don't you use your great looking one? Well, I'm going to build it from scratch here. So I'll take this maze, here it is tracked. I'm just gonna keep my null in there, I'll duplicate and then uh, I'm gonna drag this in and hold option and it'll replace like that. And then I can just kind of adjust over here and make sure that I'm on where I need to be. Like so. Pretty good. A little big. <clears throat> Holy moly. Let's just go back here. Do 500s on all these. And I can adjust as needed. Like that. There's my maze. And let's see. Can I see my maze? Oh, because I replaced with a null, my opacity was down. So there's my maze. So my counter. And we'll go here a little wide. So we'll just crunch it in and let's see if I can move it away from me just a little bit. Pretty good. And I'm going to duplicate so I can actually have another version of this later. Oh, you know what? I don't need to because After Effects will create another version of it. So I'll do layer and create shapes from vector, like that. And so it turns this guy off. What I'm gonna do is turn it back on and pre-comp it. We call this maze shadow, like that. So here's my maze and we'll change my color That. And make sure my 3D renderer is Cinema 4D. And then I can twirl down here to my geometry options. And I'm going to do 40. So I went 40 on the Z axis. That means I should probably do a minus 40. Nope, wrong way. Sorry, minus 40 like that. Not sure that worked all the way. Let's try on the shadow. Can you do minus 40 extrusion depth? And you go the opposite way. Ye uh, 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 let's try that, Steve. That's great. Let's see if that works. Extrusion depth minus 40. Foiled again. Yep, that was a great thought. Uh, I will change my anchor point on the Z axis though by 40. Well, that does do it. So let's put in some lights. 
and my null is there, so I'm just going to copy my position for my white so I can get it pretty close. settings are my radius and we'll go take that way back up Let's make another light My maze, something worked out earlier where I hit AA here to twirl down my material options and something with um, my shadows. So I want to cast shadows. Ah, there we go. So I'm casting shadows, I'm accepting shadows, and I'm not accepting lights. And it gives me this kind of soft, interesting um, ambient occlusion kind of look. And now I'm going to... So then in that case, do those lights do anything? Yes, they do. Because if I turn them off, they cast shadows. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. Uh, so now let's see. So I, does that mean that it's just assuming the ambient light is at a hundred kind of? Yeah, uh, maybe it's assuming that, but I also have this here, <clears throat> this ambient okay. light here. I can change mm -hmm. that. Diffuse, let's see what happens. Let move that up. No, nothing. All right. So now I'll go here and make the walls a little bit bigger. And because I don't want to see the stove underneath there, like that, I can. So I have my, have my maze. <laughs> Let's see, I want to go check my positions here. So the positions are the same with the shadow. And let's open this up here. And there's my maze. And I'm just going to put my solid in here like that. And we'll color it the same color as this, so I'll do there, copy. Do you copy the hex? Uh-huh, copy the hex. And if you aren't, if it, when you open it, typically it'll be selected. Right. So you just hit copy and close. Hmm. And I'll That's jump so in simple. here. <laughs> sure. And we're gonna generate a fill. And paste Dude. that. You just saved me like five steps there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So now this guy, um, I need to turn off Cinema 40 render and make it classic in here. And if I do that, I can do a blur, fast box blur. Like so. Sorry, jump back over with that. Turn that on. Come on, bro. Bet it's that opacity. 
It was my collapse transformations. And I don't want to get the lights. So I'm going to accept lights off. Let's do a render. See what he looked like. Now, go ahead. Go see. I was going to ask, does the Cinema 4D camera allow you to do any different materials, like specular shininess and stuff on the walls? Say on the walls? Or, uh, or on, any, on any surface. Like if you wanted to make it look <laughs> kind of like the granite, like shininess to that wall, uh -huh. could you do that in After Effects? Uh, there's a little bit of that you can do, and maybe with a reasonable amount of trickery and pre-comping and things like that. Uh, but what we can do, just kind of look at this real quick. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Well done. So I would, I think, go back through and do a little bit of tweak on the shadow, I think. Yeah, it's so great in that way. Yeah. Um, and something that I did uh, notice when I was trying something out, uh, earlier is that this layer looks real sharp. So the idea would be to take this here and pre-comp it, call it maze move, like that. And then I can come in here to my effects and do I think it is mosaic. Change this to like 640 by 360 or it's the next iteration of that. Down? Yeah. 320. 320 by 240? No. 160? That's too, too much. Hey, let's figure out the math on this. <laughs> so what I want to do is take that and then multiply it times. Uh, uh, uh. Let's... So you're essentially lowering the resolution. Four by three. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm essentially just reducing the resolution this thing. Huh. Is there any reason you wouldn't use like a blur? Um, because what it's the shot it's sitting in isn't necessarily blur. It's just a different resolution feel. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Playing around with the grain or something. Yeah. Like Playing around with grain, maybe putting a little bit of noise or something on top of it. Right. Um, could maybe do, so if you look up here, there's some, um, it's artifacting from the scan lines of the sensor. It's not interlaced, so I wouldn't want to mess around with deinterlacing or anything. Right. But it's the the way the pixels chromatic separation it is it's kind of a chromatic aberration right. separation it's a little bit of um line skipping oh man what's the term i'm looking for more. a little bit of moray 
Yes, I think it's more moray than than anything. Right. Anyway, you know, there's a little bit of noise, maybe a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, we need maybe need to figure out how to get moray figured out. What's moray? Uh, so if you ever see like a, a referee of a football game on TV or from an older footage of a, of a football game when his striped shirt interacts with the scan lines of the TV it causes the uh, stripes to not be able to figure out what line they need to be on and so they kind of slip and slide and it makes a different pattern like that like a like a spirograph kind of pattern or just, you know I work for a loudspeaker company yeah. so the grills on, on like you know something like that with a lot of little yeah, yeah, yeah. you know holes in it uh, pose special problems yeah <laughs> you exactly do that all the time. Uh, yeah oh, <laughs> and that's because they're, they're a bit smaller than a pixel basically yeah it's because it's yeah, it's a lot of trying the pixels contrast. the lines of the the image trying to figure out what uh, pixel to be on on the screen and blur can kind of take care of that um, yeah, what else helps <laughs> shooting, I'll take notes. <laughs> shooting shooting larger and and move, um, scaling down can help there was like a plug in that someone made like for hmm. the old final cut there's like an anti more anything and it actually did a good job hmm. of at least color taking the color out of it hmm. like that Nasty rainbow color. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. I like this. Yeah, come on. Right. Uh, now, of course, spend all day figuring out how to sit it in the scene, adjusting curves and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But uh, just for our purposes right now, that's pretty fun. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go here with my tracker camera. And my null, and maybe my lights like that. And I'm going to go file export Cinema 40 exporter. Oh, okay, let's see the right. Color maze. File export. Here, like that. We'll call this C40 Light Maze Track. And once we're done thinking, do you guys know the the? Um, I think it's a language learning situation where the guys in the German Coast Guard. And he's learning, it's his first day on the job, and he's learning all this stuff. Uh, and, you know, after a few hours of sitting in front of the console, the radio console, he gets a distress call from somebody speaking English. So he's been learning all this stuff in German. He gets a distress call in English, and it's, Mayday, Mayday, we are sinking, we are sinking, Mayday, Mayday, we are sinking. And he punches the plunger on his microphone, and he says, uh, This is a German Coast Guard. Yes, German Coast Guard, we are sinking, we are sinking. And he says, uh, what are you sinking about? <laughs> yeah, so that was my computer. My computer was sinking there for a minute. So we're going to open. That was good. Hilarious. <laughs> like that. Oh man, are you kidding me? It brought my maze in. Woo woo wee, look at that, guys. Look at that. That it did, mate. That it did. So I'll take that material right there. And oh, we're gonna go find that black solid and drop that material right there. And it looks like it is uh, maybe. 
be a little bit low. So we can raise that up. Oh, that's it right there. And let's get this back. Let's just hit render on there and see what we got. That is not what I want. Disable that. This is what I want. Render. All right, so there we go, looking good. And just for fun, I'm going to go diffusion, and effects, and ambient occlusion, like that. So now, when I render, some really cool looking ambient occlusion on there. And I'll take, let's just maybe make another light here. Render. What's the render shortcut again? Uh, Command R. Maybe that light needs to have higher resolution shadow, but not quite as dark. So that Let's just do like that. Can actually select two of them and adjust them together. Higher resolution. So let's select all those and shadow map higher resolution. So that's kind of interesting looking. Just save it and when I go back. To After Effects, I can come over here to Island Tract and put, I'll do Command I, and go grab that, and drop it in here, and I'll do Software, instead of Software Rendering, let's do Final. Looks like I have a little bit of an issue, but we'll see if it looks actually like it's rendering fairly fast. I need to maybe change my anti-aliasing. It's hanging out over the edge and it looks very gray. Yeah. Ooh, it's working hard. Yeah, I can take camera, lights, shape layers, solids, and nulls. Okay. And it uh, looks like. Uh, Cinema 4D can accept Illustrator files, but you would take it in as an Illustrator file and extrude it in Cinema 4D. Okay. Cool. It's yeah. hovering a little. It is hovering, Jeremy, and I don't like that. So let's see. Let's go back to Cinema 4D and see what our issue is here. So there's my null. My coordinate is. What am I working with here? The y axis? Yeah. 
So we'll copy that and go to the solid. And actually, I'm going to paste it there. Let's pull that out and paste like that. But I think that's not in the right spot either, is it? Save it and go look. Now it really is hovering. <laughs> yeah, it looks maybe like. Let me split the difference on there. I'm that sure. did look very cool. <laughs> I'm not sure why. It's having trouble with that. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's also turn some other stuff off. So we'll turn the maze off. That way we don't have to render it. Save it and it updates. And. So it looks like we're still underneath. And it's ever so slightly sliding. Yeah. It's like it's locked on the front, but it's drifting on the back. And what's our, maybe we put that at 90? No. That's how you get back. So I can do show and it goes over to Cineware. Let's do a draft render. And the, uh, the stove top is not exactly level, it actually sticks up a little bit. So. Okay, so that's locked pretty tight. Go back here, turn on the maze, make sure it's in the right spot. Like that. And I'll do Command B, set up my anti aliasing to best. I'll do two, four, like so. Back to After Effects standard. And final render. Into aliasing adds a little time. So let's go turn it off. <laughs> There we go. That looks pretty good. Of course, the light is going to be better coming out of Cinema 4D. We could even set up uh, in Cinema, we can set up a nice bright uh, area light over here. We've got this chandelier up here where light is coming from. Uh, so, 
in order to do something like that, we can select this here and see. Let's just uh, solo this. that and do uh, um, I want to create a camera oh well and that and just delete or turn off the camera I'll delete the camera <laughs> way over there. So what I've done is something that you need to watch out for and that is I got rid of my tracked stuff, my cameras and the lights and all that and put them in here. Therefore I don't have them in this comp. Uh, and that means that if I'm going to get them back, I have to resolve. And you can hope that After Effects is going to resolve all the right way. But it looks like if I do this and create the camera, can you maybe just Control Z? No, not all the way back. It's not all the footage, it's on the pre-comp. Right. So, huh. so I'll, I'll try this again. Um, like that. And create a solid right there. Okay. So now that's locked to the window. And I'm going to put a null here and call this light null. Did you just replace from your bin? Yes. How did you do that without dragging? Uh, so there's an option command or um, alt control on Windows and then the forward slash. Nice. Okay. Thank and you. so one is selected, the other is selected, and then option command, and the, it's it's the question mark okay. key. Thank you. Slide. That's yeah. awesome. you can also grab and drag and replace like that. Um, but that's a really quick way to change it. Uh, you know what? I need a light, so I'll do shift option command L. And create a light and I will copy that position from my solid and paste it to the light and then I'll parent my light to the null once I do that I can change the position of my light on that null plane does that make sense because now instead of working in the world space I'm working in the null space. Yeah? Make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's maybe take a look at it. So the null becomes like, like a this. 3D point of origin? Yes, okay. yes. So if we look over here. If I do not have the light parented, And I move on the x-axis, I move like that, move on the y. Like that and the z. So you see how I'm moving on the z, but I'm moving at an angle to the null, mm -hmm. right there. If I parent the light to the null, I now move in parallel to the null. So you can get the exact angles you want. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a good idea.
Steve, that $5 I said I would give to you for After Effects compliments, <laughs> I'll give that to you later this week. <laughs> All right, so now I'm sitting on the window right there. And I'll actually um, just want to keep that, and I want to send that to Cinema 4D. So how do I do that? I can... Spotlight and face it toward like that. I think that's right. Could be others found. There's not big export. Okay. Race track. window light and we go to cinema it's gonna take a minute to export it now I will Ooh, I think there's the light and all spotlight what I want to do is get rid of all this other stuff. And then copy this. Like that. Go here and paste it. So now there's my light. And it's going to be an area light. How big is it? Okay, I see it. Like that. And what if we just turn off these other guys? There, so I'm getting light from the window. that Ooh. go back to shadow map like that and maybe these lights I want to reduce the intensity Save and go back to After Effects. And we'll do a, oh, let's go turn on. Our, we'll just do geometry. It looks a little better. And we kind of have light coming from this direction on purpose instead of Accidentally, so it's a little bit like it's interacting with the scene. Yeah. Uh, and I can go so far probably as to like come here and cut out a picture of this, put it on a flat plane inside Cinema 4D, come over here, cut out a picture of this wall back here this area, put it on a flat plane in Cinema 4D, away from the camera, um, and then come back here, cut out this wall, make a still of it, make, make all these luminant inside Cinema 4D, so it's actually lighting the scene with these pieces of the scene, mm. almost like a, what's it called, a, um, Sky Dome or something like that. You guess for reflections too. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're actually on on set and you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna put a 3D object in here, then you can go ahead and shoot your all your 90 degree angles and and create
create your either uh, HDR or whatever your lighting situation. Um, and then let's see what else would we want to do here. Uh, just for fun, because we can, let's just put some text in here. And I've tracked all this over here so I can actually. Ooh, I could just create text right there, like that. So let's do that. And I'll I can say maze. Make it bigger, pull it forward. I'm going to extrude it. When it extrudes, it extrudes backwards. <clears throat> so it's 3D. We'll twirl it down and go geometry 50, 60. We'll put a little bevel on it. Could put a beard on it. I think we'll just put a bevel on it. A word with a beard would be kind of weird. <laughs> so what was I doing there? Was it? Do you have any lights in? Maybe, maybe I don't have any lights in here anymore. I have that one spotlight. So maybe I can go over here and grab those lights. To men. Good call, John. That's why I keep you around, man. <laughs> How easy would it be to basically cut that and paste it into the C4E file? That piece of text. Uh, I can, yeah, I'll show you. So. I'm not going to cut it, but I can go back to the Cinema 4D file here. And I'll go here and do text like that. So it's going to be over here. Hold shift and rotate it. And it changes to the maze. Right. Let's just see. Then I'll need to extrude it with something like that. Do fillet cap. And make a new texture for it. And we'll just make color red I'm gonna put I really like this being able to put maybe an occlusion on there without it looking at everything else in the whole scene mm. all right so a little bit of the wrong spot a good first guess. Thanks, man. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Why don't I start further down in the shot? 
And he wouldn't move that base oh. back a little bit so it isn't hanging out over the edge of the table like that. Yep. I can do that too. Let's go back here. in front. In it. So is there a way to like look at the kind of coordinates from the word maze and paste them to the word the in C4D? Or is it working on two different methods of Yeah, uh, I would I would have to do another say again, John? If I set up another null and then Yeah. Oh okay. If I did another null right. C4D. And then Jeremy says maze is hanging out. So we can go put that guy. There we go. Save it. And I'm going to go back to anti-aliasing over here and just drop it off again so we can get a little quicker render. Uh, let's see, other possibilities. Um, <clears throat> we can set up masking opportunities. So uh, if we wanted something in 3D to be on the opposite side of the island there, we can um, use the camera track and create a solid that sits where the island would be and use that as a Mask. No, I'll show you. All right. So we want. Let's say we want maze. Find the island. I'm gonna get myself a drink of water and be back. All right. Like that. I'm just gonna go turn off the the. the. And we can go here, camera tracker. And maybe, let's see, it's just solo. And I want to, let's create a solid right there. Orient it to the island. Set the anchor point up there. OK. 
kind of align it with the edge of the island. Let's see how close we are. Pretty good. And then I'm going to scale it that way. And we can scale it like that too. Scoot it over. Just need to make sure that it's sitting in the right spot. Um, then I can uh, duplicate that, put those guys in the comp themselves, bring his track. Sure, I've got all the right lights in there. Okay. Want to look good. That. Okay, so now I see where my trackings go. So what's the shortcut to bring up those nodes? Uh, tab. tab. Yep. It looks a little bit weird. So maybe we need to spin a tiny bit like that. I'm gonna rough this out for you and then let you play with it on your own. And so then I would go pre comp. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we'll take all this and undo that. Uh, um, duplicate that camera. Recomp all this. Well, now that I've done that, I can now inverted. You can see how wonderful that works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so then. The idea is just to make sure that it's as long as it needs to be. So you can do a track map, but not in the top comp. Right, because the Cinema 4D track map is shut off. Uh, and probably a good thing to do would be to break the, the maze out on top. Um, so I've got that right there. And put it there so the maze is on top of everything. And my my um, mask here. <laughs> Just move it around, make sure it covers the table. So what, what I'm getting to is how you would do it, 
And right. Of course, you're going to fine tune it. You're going to make sure all your stuff is uh, on the right planes and all that kind of stuff. Right. Through uh, creating your nulls and all that. Cool. Well, that's the idea. All right. So I think I covered everything I told you I would cover. I at least touched on everything I told you I would cover. And I'm pretty happy about that because sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get sidetracked and I wander around trying to figure stuff out. Sometimes I just solve it and I'm, that makes me real happy. But most of the time we just wander around things until I go, why don't I get back with you on that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's cool. So, um, we covered creating that maze in 3D inside After Effects. We covered creating or getting the track. And we covered creating the uh, let's see, I talked about that. We created cover, creating the mat, creating the maze in 3D from Illustrator to After Effects to creating the shape layers. Um, we did a little bit of tracking. We did uh, going back and forth between Cinema 4D and After Effects. We did the 2D. Uh, from 3D point, and uh, we talked about some various ways to comp some of these things to make a little more realism in there. Um, anything I'm missing? Oh, the really interesting thing that I thought was cool that After Effects does is gave us the ability to do that uh, maze with these uh, ambient occluded shadows. So that was accept lights off, appears in reflections, doesn't look like that matters right now. So cast shadows on, accept shadows on, and then accepts lights off. Mm -hmm. And you could you could probably do even more in just inside of After Effects without C four D. Yeah. If you were to create different layers with different lights. Yeah. And then use and buddy then, modes to kind of put them together. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, at some point. The idea is that you need to, once you get your 3D all created, if you're going to add blurs or um, shadows or, I mean, you can, you can even do depth. So we could um, take this and put a, um, we could put a solid with a gradient and use that solid with the gradient as a depth map to get some depth for like a compound blur or a camera uh, lens blur up here. So the camera lens blur or compound blur can accept that gradient map and we can do uh, camera depth with that even. Um, so if you guys, if that's interesting to you, maybe we can talk about that next time. Or yeah, you can even set it up with a light, like just make your material white mm -hmm. and then put a light right in front of the camera mm -hmm. and then using fall off to uh -huh. create a more interesting, you know, it wouldn't just be a solid gradient, it might actually be affected. Yeah, have a little extra depth. And, yeah. Yeah. So we could play around with that if you want. Uh, so if you guys have any thoughts, anything you see that you want to cover, anything you have questions about, let me know. Todd, I forgot you were over there. You were sitting behind the computer. <laughs> Glad you came. <laughs> I'm just, just taking it all in. Cool, dude. Um, and then 
Uh, let's see, there's some extra stuff going on in the world, like the Gamer Developer Conference this week. This week, so pay attention to that because uh, I think being able to include Unity and some After Effects stuff because the Unity is free to download and mess around with. Are you talking about cool. Unity as in the, the Unity, Unity game, game engine? engine? Yes, it is free to download oh and mess around my. with. Oh my. So please do that. Oh there's my. A of, there's a lot of tutorials, a lot of projects. Are you saying that they're going to make that plugin into After Effects? No, I'm saying that you can, if you dig hard enough, you can figure out how to create renders out of Unity. Oh yeah, I remember you yeah. doing some of that stuff. Yeah. So, so both Unity and Unreal are, are free, plus they have a couple of particle engines in there as well. Which okay. might, uh, yeah, might yeah, yeah. Some interesting things. Yeah. I would say maybe Unity has not quite as deep of a learning curve, but I, I can be wrong on that. There's a fair amount of community support on both. Okay, right? so it makes sense. that's good. So, yeah. so nice. I'm going to pull up here. Uh, something that I created in Unity. So that guy right there is created in Unity and it's cohort with a waterfall. Here. So that was just rendered out of Unity. And I did, actually, the waterfall is part Unity and part actual footage of the waterfall. Uh, then there's also, I think, CDC just happened. Is that what that, no, CDC I, is the... I think you're right. I think it happened like a couple, it was a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't okay, it? yeah. And then um, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference is coming up soon. And uh, NAB... It's yeah. Supposed to be Maybe. And, uh, six, an Adobe six. Summit. That's supposed to be okay. Up yep. Good. So pay attention to those things. I'll see if I can find info and make sure I post it uh, when I do. But keep your ear to the ground and keep in touch. All right. Thank you so much for being a part of this Dallas After Effects User Group. Thanks and for the demo. Go to Dallas After Effects User Group. Dot com. No, that's not it. Uh, go to facebook.com slash groups slash Dallas A-E-U-G to join our group. See?